do when you have a dispute. Janet Pfeiffer, our self-help guru and an expert in anger management, is here to talk about how to resolve those nasty family arguments without getting violent. Janet, you know, it, it, we get arguments over all kinds of things that those outside the family say, oh, that's ridiculous. But family things can get pretty rough. Oh my gosh, yes, we all have them. We all have at least one person in our family who loves to challenge our patience mm -hmm. <laughs> and our ability to call ourselves family. Um, but there are ways that we can get beyond that and try to resolve things and, and improve the situation. We can't always fix things completely, but we can usually make some type of improvement. All right, how do you help us out? Because when you're <laughs> dealing with families and very strong personalities, yeah. sometimes you just butt heads and neither side is going to back down. How do you fix that? Well, here's the key. One of the first things that we have to be careful of is our ego, because that, that will get in the way of any type of ability to But resolve. I'm always right. <laughs> They're always wrong. I know that. I can tell you. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. But no, you have two very strong personalities, and that's usually the case. And I'm right, uh, he said, she said, I'm right, and they're right. You know, how do you resolve that? Okay, well, one of the things that we have to be careful of is using those terms right and wrong because that's all ego talking. So the minute I believe that I'm right, then the other person's go going to go on the defensive because nobody wants to be proven that they're wrong. So accepting the fact that, you know, maybe this is not an issue of right and wrong, it's just a matter of different personality types, different beliefs, different needs, and being more accommodating and sympathetic towards that will allow us to ease things up a bit. You, you, your patience can be only pushed to a certain limit, and then sometimes you explode. I get the um, impression you're living this. <laughs> You think? I'm, I wouldn't say anything uh, about that, but you know, uh, you can agree to disagree, but Absolutely. then a lot of times things just will grate on your nerves and unfortunately then explode. So how do you cope with things along the way? Those little things that ni nip at you, the death by a thousand paper cuts, <laughs> well, as opposed to, you know, responding to everything, kind of like an or you respond thing. to nothing. Yes, uh, yes, I know. And you know, the first thing though, Laura, is that we always have to ask ourselves, why do I allow this to bother me? Because there's usually something, and I know you don't want to hear that because it's the other person's <laughs> fault. If they would just leave me alone, I'd be fine. But usually there's some issue that we have. So we always have to t take a look at that. Because very often, if I can resolve that issue internally, then I it doesn't their behavior is not problematic for me so that's always the first thing it's hard not to take things personally sometimes though yeah but you know what when we when we do that that's the first step towards making matters worse you know somebody else's issues or behaviors is not about me does you know, it really work to say hey I love you we're family let's talk this out well you know what that <laughs> you may not want to tell them that you love them at that moment they may <laughs> feel that you're being sarcastic but yes establishing common grounds is really a key element to resolving things say like, you know what we're both part of the same family and you know we this is a wonderful family and we all have great qualities we all contribute a lot let's find a way that we can make things work better for both of us and then it'll affect the whole family as well so you give them an incentive for wanting to work with you and, and resolve that issue. Is it helped to bring in a third party or does that complicate things? Well, yes and no. Um, I always advocate that people try to resolve the issues on their own because very often you bring in a third party, people are going like, why did you bring them? I don't want them to know what's right. going on between us. Yeah, so it's sometimes, a family matter or a private matter. I never know if that person is going to take sides, all right? So if you can bring in someone who's very neutral and you know that you can trust, it can be beneficial, but try to resolve it first and foremost on your own. And also, this can happen with neighbors, it can happen with coworkers. It can happen with anyone. Overall, sure. as we kind of close out this segment, best advice when you're dealing with tense situations so it doesn't get to the next level. Well, first of all, you have to be very careful of your attitude and approach before you talk to anybody about anything of a sensitive nature. So check that first. Make sure that you're going in with the right reasons and that you're, you're trying to accomplish something that is fair and reasonable for both parties. All right, Janet, we thank you so much for your advice and guidance Always here. Always my pleasure.